Hello everyone, my name is Benedict, but my friend and family call me Bene. Um, this is my little corner on the web to talk about my meeting. Everything I meet, I would love to meet, I'm dreaming, I'm dreaming to meet. Um, I'm French and I live in the north of Paris with my uh, partner and my two daughters. Um, so it's been a, a while since, since I recorded my last um, podcast. Um, I just I'm just coming back from uh, Spain, where we spent the Christmas holiday uh, in the south of Spain, where my partner comes from. And I'm recording today from a very very gloomy and dark uh, weather here in the north of Paris. Um, so, um, if you watch my previous podcast, you would, uh, you will know that I, I was um, wondering what I would meet in Spain because I realized that I couldn't bring my knitting needles. So, um, what I did is that I I went through my uh, queue and I remembered that I had a um, um, uh, pattern for a um, sweater for my youngest daughter that I could knit flat. So it was not far from my queue, it was like 12 or very far, far in my queue. But I thought that it would be uh, the easiest thing to do because I would just need to buy needles there and I would not have to uh, worry about the size of the cables and um, because I would not knit in the round so I just had to buy a very simple needle and um, that's what I did and it worked. So I, I'm going to start right away and show you what it looks like. So the, um, the pattern is, I'm, I'm reading through my notes because I um, can't remember all the names, but um, so it's Poesia, Cabled v textured Stitched Sweater Pattern from Katia, is a K. Um, In the pattern, they use the Katia yarn, but I, I really love the color and the, the look of the pattern. I will put a picture, but I found that the yarn was quite expensive, and I didn't want to um, knit a sweater for my daughter that would cost more than 50 euros, because she's, she's nine years old, and she's like, Growing a lot, so I don't know how much wear this sweater is going to, how much time she's going to wear it. So, and at the same time, I wanted to try a yarn that I I heard about in Amy Palco uh, podcast because it's French, and uh, I always like to try yarn more local to me. So it's, um, I'm sorry, the colors today are going to be terrible. Uh, even though it's five o'clock. So it's a funky super tweed in the color where 16, it's a tweedy red with a speckle of colors in blue, yellow, and sometimes pink. She chose the, the color herself. She, my youngest daughter, she has a quite a dark complexion. She's uh, she's a bit darker than me. She's like more like cookie caramel color. So the red red on her is just perfect color. She shows very well. So um, I came back yesterday from uh, the south of Spain 
and uh, I put like the my knitting on my uh, shagoo needle. So I'm going to show you what it looks like. So even though I said in one of my previous podcasts that I would not knit, I would not knit flat again because I didn't want to mattress stitch all the pieces. I will have to do it. Uh, so I guess I will have to learn and get better at it. Uh, it's a size 10 to 12 year old, so it's not it's not going to take me forever to to assemble all the pieces together. So this is the front front piece where you have the the uh, texture pattern in the V. So I don't know what I did. I did something wrong because the V pattern is supposed to increase up to the the arm, and uh, on one side it's not the case so I just figured I'm not going to rip that back I'm just going to invent something so I started to uh, do a new V pattern cable pattern on the side and I would just need um, to I mean it's I think it's okay I mean she was she's happy with it and she will wear it so I'm not going to put pressure on myself. She's happy with what I need. And it will not look like the picture, but it will be hers and she will wear it. Um, the yarn is is great. Uh, it's, let me read it, 95% wool, 5% mohair. It's very soft and um, very easy to knit. I got gauge on my first try, so I'm very happy. Uh, I'm knitting it, I'm knitting the sweater on the uh, US 10 six centimeters um, meters needles, and it's uh, quite a quick knit. So I was quite happy because I could knit during during uh, the holiday, and uh, it's something that I could bring with me and knit outside. It was quite warm in the south of Spain. The day we left, uh, very early in the morning in Paris, it was minus zero degrees, so we were wearing a lot of layers, and when we got to Malaga. Uh, it was so warm, we were not wearing any sweater or anything. And both my daughter got a cold from the change of temperature. It was too too wild. It was very warm, even from for the south of Spain. Um, I tried to do some footage, but I didn't, um, I, I started looking at them because I asked my daughter to film for me. Uh, I haven't said that in my, in here in the podcast, but I'm just going to say it and then. Uh, I'm, I'm disabled and I walk with a walking stick. Uh, I don't have a lot of um, balance, so it's quite hard for me to film, to have my phone in one hand and to uh, have my walking stick on the other hand and uh, focus on what I'm filming and not focus on standing up. So I, I tried uh, once and it uh, was okay, didn't fall over. But then I asked my daughter to film because we went to... Um, Dance festival. We, I took quite a few pictures, and um, I'll see if I can manage to put some of the footage there uh, or picture. 
uh, at the end of the of the podcast. Um, okay, what else? So I finished. So it's all about my daughter today. No, not all, but I finished her poppy cardigan. I talked about it in all the other podcasts, so I'm not going to um, talk about it again. Uh, you have all the detail in the show notes uh, below the video. So I finished the, you know, it's a cardigan, so it's not over until it's over. Like in length, right? Um, so I finished using it. I stick it. It was quite a challenge for me. Um, I think. I didn't do a bad job at it, but where it's a bit wonky and it's a bit, it's at the top. So we'll see how how it will look when it's really really done. Uh, what I have to do left because I I I couldn't finish it before we leave so. I still have to block it again because I did the bottom bun that is the bottom bun is not blocked. But here now it's uh, it's not that cold. Uh, we don't have the chimney on, so I don't know how long it would take to dry. So we'll see tomorrow. I still have one day off tomorrow before. Going back to work, so maybe I'll try to uh, block it tomorrow. Um, I show it with the bottom. The bottom are not. They are. They are. Uh, I just put them on to see what they look like, but it's not. It's not fixed. I just and it looks. I mean, the detail of the bottom is just great. I love it. Uh, she really loves them too, so we'll see. They are quite small, so I don't know how it will um, look once it's um, buttoned. My float, my float are not that bad for the first attempt at color work. I mean, I'm quite happy with the result. Um, she wanted to, my daughter, they went to the cinema and she wanted to wear it. And I was so happy that she, she just reached for it and tried to wear it. And I told her, no, you cannot wear it because I'm going to podcast. And uh, it's not totally, totally finished. It's knitted, but it's not totally finished. I really, I'm really happy. Uh, she find it a bit itchy. But she said that she would wear it with something underneath, so it's a win. Um, in between those two projects, I did the Bisbee Barrett uh, in uh, Rauma Kinul Blue and uh, Drop Kit Silk Petrol Blue. It's gorgeous, it's lovely. I love. I love this pattern from Sari Norlum. Um, I will need more. I already know that I will need more. And I already know in which color I'll show you. Um, it's a bit small for me. I have a big head and a lot of hair. Um, but I haven't blocked it. So maybe if I block it, it will be perfect. But I, I wore it already two or three times and um, people complimented me for my beret so I think it's I love the detail I learned a lot because I never did a night card binding for a hat maybe I'll do one more with a night card binding and one with a just a ribbing just to change and to see if it fits me better. Um, so what I have, I was thinking, okay, 
I still have quite a lot of leftovers from the my daughter's cardigan. And I know I said here that I wouldn't buy yarn. And I did buy a lot of yarn because I bought this fonty and with it I bought a lot of mohair because I talked in my previous uh, podcast about the patchwork cardigan that I wanted to do but I didn't have mohair so I bought like 12 balls of mohair and you know about combo color combination so I wasn't quite sure about this color combination with what I had in mind for the the patchwork cardigan. So I think I'm not going to use it for the patchwork cardigan. But it would just go perfectly with the one one of those folds I have left left from the patchwork cardigan. So either like that with a brown or like that and even maybe like that with the green I already have a green beret but um, you know as I said and I'm very French for for hat and beret I wear them a lot uh, I think it's not a stereotype. Uh, French girl wear barrettes, so it's it's. I didn't put um, back all the yarn in my stash. I'm just keeping it around. I think that in between project, I will just need a barrette. It will not take me two days like Amy Palco. I think it took me two weeks. I'm not that fast. Um, I was thinking that maybe if I had to do a, a cowl one day, I would do a very slow cowl where you would be allowed to knit a sweater in one year <laughs> and not in two months, you know. Um, Talking about cow, I'm just going to move on from my finished object to what I'm knitting now and what I will plan, what I wouldn't, sorry, what I would like to knit afterwards. So I really want to uh, knit in the, the, I really, oh, sorry, struggling. I would like to enter the lento cow because I have the lento uh, pattern for since September, but I can't manage to find the right yarn combination because I think it's a uh, 14, 14 stitches for 10 centimeters or 16. No, it's less than 16 and I cannot get gauge with. So it's another conversation. I'm just going to move on and talk about what I'm still knitting on. It's always like that at this time of the year. I want to knit everything. I'm just, I'm just surrounded by projects and I can't finish any of them because I'm just, I just want to test on new things. And I think it's quite common in the knitting community right now. We just want to cast on. And it's the 1st of January, so I just struggle not to cast on something new. So, um, let's see. I need to finish my husband's sweater because I need the 4 millimeters needle to cast on something new. So I'm going to show it to you again because I haven't talked about it for a while. So I decided that I would finish one sleeve on my partner's sweater and then I would uh, move on to the body and then try to finish it a bit faster 
um, what I plan to do because I need the middle. Um, so this question is, sorry, I'm a bit, I hope that it will make sense at the end. So this sweater is the, I'm trying to pronounce that each time I'm struggling, I'm, uh, I'm sorry. I don't like to uh, put your names. Um, I'll try my best. Hans Lum sweater by Petit Knit. Um, so I'm holding two strands of yarn. Um, two strands of alpaca. Um, it's uh, Drops Flora. It's pink. It's, I have to say that now that it's dark in the house and we can't really see. I'll tell you the story about why I bought so much pink yarn and didn't need anything for myself. And this is um, Olst Titicaca. Um, 100% alpaca in the colorway something something rose blush I think or rose blush rose bay rose bay held together it's very soft very soft um very drapey um it has a folded color folded color People talk about how you need some time to put an elastic because it loses its shape. So we'll see how it holds. Um, I'm knitting the small size because there is. I'm knitting the small size. I'm just going to be, you know, efficient. I'm knitting the small size because I think that it will fit. Good reason. And I've got lots. I don't know why. I've, no, I know why I bought so much pink. Yarn. I bought so much pink yarn because I had a project in mind, and then I saw the color combination, and it didn't work. So I bought more pink yarn, and then more pink yarn. So we'll talk about that. I'll show you all the other pink project I have, and that. I didn't do. I'm doing that right now. He he will be happy. He's waiting for it. Um. So I need to finish it. I don't like knitting uh, sleeves, so I'm forcing myself to knit sleeves uh, before finishing the the jumper, because what I do is that. If I leave the sleeve for the end, I'm so bored with the sleeve that most of my uh, sweater, most of my sleeve for my sweater, the sleeves are a bit too short. So now, even after blocking, so now I just, you know, need the sleeve, at least one sleeve, and then need the, the sweater to the end. And maybe need the other sleeve. As I need, as I need um, the needles, I think I'll do that. Then, um, last work in progress. And you see, for me, it's a lot. I always said that I have two. Normally, I have two projects. And um, right now, I have one, two, three. And um, if you count, like, Two socks, like, is it one project or is it two projects? So I'm still working on my Christmas socks. Nobody will receive the sock, the Christmas sock on Christmas. Now it's a fact. It's my fault. I had to start earlier. I didn't. So if you remember. Or if you watch my previous podcast, I don't think so, but so I'll explain it again. It's my first time knitting socks. So the socks are the one from Andrea Maori, 
the DRK everyday socks. So for one sock, I'm using using Magic Loop, and for the other sock, I'm using Adi Sock Wonder Knitting Needle. And it was kind of an experiment to see if I like to knit socks. Uh, what technique I like best. So if I compare, you could say that I like better knitting in the round than magic looping. But I'm not sure it's true because I, I think I just stick the one on the Adi uh, needles because I uh, knitted uh, on my way to work and it was just easy to pick up this and um, part of the and this big doll and go to work so that's why I, I knitted more on this sock and then um, I like knitting sock, but I find that it um, hurts my hands. So maybe because I'm still new at knitting sock, uh, I'm still a bit struggling at magic looping. Um, I tend to uh, be, knit uh, tighter when I'm doing something that I don't know how to do. I'm not sure if I'm doing it well. Um, so what I do is that I need very little. I just need a few rows. <laughs> See if I can pronounce the S <laughs> at the end of the word in 2023. Um, so I, I think that I, um, it hurts less my hand when I do magic looping because I pose and do all the magic looping thing. And um, what I do too is that I alternate between uh, English style throwing technique and continental knitting because it's a uh, ribbing, so I just try to uh, never knit. Uh, not do the same movement over and over and I stop a lot that's why that's why it's not uh, done plus I'm, I, I, I have a lot of knitting I wanted to finish the, the poppy cardigan uh, this is bad this is wrong I shouldn't have knitted the beret it was not necessary, but it was very, very, very cold here. And I just, I wanted to need something for myself to be warm. And, and I needed it and finished it. So it just took time for other projects. But I guess that I can be a bit selfish sometimes and need for myself too. Okay, so I'm not, I'm, I don't know, I still don't know what technique I like the best. I'm just uh, following the pattern. It's a very clear pattern. Uh, it's very easy to follow and I recommend it for a new sock knitter. Um, I like that it's a toe up sock because if you need for somebody else, um, if you need for someone that you've never knitted for before, you can just, the person can just try it on and you, sure, you are sure that it, would, it will fit. And then I guess once you measured everything and you know how you're supposed to knit it, you can just change technique. Maybe for my next, uh, because I already have plan for another pair of socks, I would just try to do it um, um, the other way around. So it's from the ribbing to the toe. 
uh, but right now I'm quite happy. It just uh, it just stays in the sofa. I mean, all my knitting are staying in the sofa. Nobody can sit on the sofa. I can sit on the sofa, and then my knitting is sitting on the sofa, and nobody is saying anything. But <laughs> I need to finish some stuff so that you know my daughter can sit at my <laughs> next to me on the sofa. Um, so. One other uh, project that I'm just going to, I'm not going to say a lot about it because I'm quite spontaneous um, right now and I, I don't have, I'm not sure I have all the details in my head. I'll talk about it in more depth uh, next time. So I had this project, uh, I started this project in Spain last summer. Because it was too warm to knit, so I did crochet. Let me leave for that right now. So I'm going to pause and uh, do something about it. Okay, so um, crochet pattern from Mola Mills. Um, I'm going to say she's Scandinavian because I can't remember. Uh, where she is from? Norwegian? She's Swedish? I can't remember. She she had a crochet book uh, which came out a few months ago, but this is one of her patterns uh, on her website. I think it's called The Lemon Pouch. So, um, I didn't really choose the yarn, you know, I went to the local uh, yarn shop in Malaga. Um, I took what they had. It was it, in this yarn shop, uh, how I would say, if you want, in this yarn shop, crochet projects are for baby. So all the colors are very pastel and mild. So it's not the yellow I would have picked for this project. Uh, at first I was a bit disappointed, but uh, I would I said, you know what? It doesn't matter. I'm just going to try this new technique because it's tapestry crochet, and I didn't know about it. I followed the her domestica course and learn how to do it and look you mean it's not it's not bad I'm quite happy um, but the only thing I had to say but it's my fault it has nothing to do with the pattern that I didn't make my life easier because I had to crochet with two strands of yellow and two strands of of white because the yarn, yarn is quite thin i don't have the label it's uh, i don't remember what it is and it's not easy to uh, crochet with four strands of yarn on the beach so i i'm nearly done but i made i made a mess and I spent I spent quite a while trying to untangle everything, and I'm just I'm going to think I think I'm going to cut the yarn and untangle it, and uh, it's the first time I do that. I'm quite fed up, but I'm nearly nearly done. I'm um, at the end of the at the end of the lemon, the last one. So I think I have like two or three more rows and then I I didn't really have plan for that. I thought okay if I have enough yarn maybe I can use it for a cushion. If I don't maybe I'll practice how to put a zipper on and use it as a, as a knitting project bag. 
Um, um, I can just give it to my daughters and they can just put their dolls or uh, drawing thing in it. I, I find I knew that I could just freestyle it, freestyle it and and that if I finish it um, somebody would use it. The um, I'm quite happy with the result because I had so little idea. I never I never use uh, buy yarn with so little idea about why what I would do and why and to do what. Normally normally what I need I know exactly uh who is going to wear it, who is going to use it. I'm I'm not knitting something that I will, will not be wore, wore, wear, or use. Mm, so I brought that back from Spain and I thought, okay, I'm going to finish it. I'm not going to leave it in Spain for three rows. I'm going to finish it. Because next summer, my daughter, my older daughter and I, we have a wild plan. She um, draws... Um, from uh, Ponyo, Ponyo from uh, the Japanese, um, uh, it's not an anime, how is it called? Well, you know, all, everybody knows Ponyo. Um, and I thought, okay, maybe I can do a crochet pattern from your drawing. And I use um, uh, an app. Um, I think it quite works, so we thought, okay, next summer I'll plan the yarn, I'll buy the yarn for, and I will try to do a um, stud bag or something. Um, so it's a bit, it's like summer plan for, for um, the two of us. Um, I think she's quite good. She's quite good at crochet and knitting. She's not like um, my older daughter. She's 11 years old. And she's not knitting or crocheting on her own. Things that she, she's not that. She's not at that point yet. But I think she liked the idea of uh, making something from a drawing. And... Uh, she really uh, uh, loves Ponyo, so um, we'll see. We'll see. So I didn't. Ha I didn't want to have this around. I want to finish, and then next summer we can focus on the on the on this project. Okay. So I think this is going to be my last. Yes, because I talked a lot. Um, I could talk for hours about for, about my knitting but then I find as a viewer I find it difficult to find time to watch podcasts that last one hour because I don't have that time so I have to split it so I don't like it I don't like to split a podcast in three because I don't have time to watch it so I always try to keep it short uh, so my last uh, knitting so it's not it's my knitting project it's what I would like to knit next so when I was buying a lot of yarn uh, in September I bought this woolly uh, woolly knit British cone in September because I thought that I would uh, enter um, Inga um, woolly knit uh, cow but I, mean, I don't know why I'm too slow I can't I'm too slow between the moment I choose the yarn I start knitting the cow is over and I bought this cone in green I think the color is uh, Pine Forest, and this is Celia Silcolana. It's something forest too. 
So um, it's uh, kid mohair and woolly wool. And my idea was to knit. I had two ideas for this. Or I would knit the um, uh, lento by, I don't want to uh, butcher the name, so I'm just going to um, go through my computer and lento Joanna Yetala. Okay. Uh, or I'm going to knit the first sweater by Lizzie Hester. Um, so I bought three cones of woolen. I bought this green one and then I bought uh, a blue one. I saw the lento in, in blue and green and I can't decide. I saw the first sweater in blue and green and I can't decide. So I started to um, knit a swatch. First, I was thinking about the first sweater. Uh, I'm supposed to have 24 stitches for 10 centimeters and I went up a needle size so I'm knitting it. Sorry, I'm very um, yep. I'm knitting this on the five millimeter needle, and I'm getting eighteen stitches for ten centimeters. So I didn't need that tight. I need to swatch again. Um, I think the fabric is too. Uh, her airy, you can see through it. But I really like the color. I'm sorry about the light. I'll show you, I'll show it to you some of the day, the daylight. I really like the color. I need something in green in my wardrobe. It's very, very soft. I think whatever I choose, choose to knit. I'm going to wear it. If I need a uh, lento, I'll wear it. If I need a first sweater, I'll wear it. It's just a question of uh, finding the right pattern for the right uh, wool. Um, so the lento, I think it's, I can't remember, it's 14, 15, I already said that. So I'm going to, you know, I'm going to swatch again um, tomorrow and figure out. I have the pattern, I have the yarn, I have the time, I have plenty of knitting project waiting for me. Um, I really would like to enter a cal. I've never done it, so I was thinking of the length of cal, or I was thinking of the we. Oui. How do you say that? The cal from Casey of Young Folk Knit, booty, booty sweater. It's like a sweater very wow. But if I don't, it doesn't matter. I knit because I it brings me joy and that's it. So to finish, finish off, this podcast is going to be long. Uh, I forgot last time to talk about the podcast I enjoy uh, watching and now I want to do it because now that I'm trying to podcast myself, I realize that it's not that easy to put yourself in front of a screen and talk about knitting. So let's take two minutes and talk about people that really are doing it so well and enjoy watching them. So I discovered... It's new to me. Maybe everybody will know and say. <laughs> Katie Green in the Green Bean podcast. Really enjoy your podcast. I binge watch her podcast. I don't know if you can say that. But I watch like three years of podcast during the winter uh, holidays. 
I really love it. I discovered her podcast by looking for a sticking technique and she did a very, very clear video on how to stick her cardigan, a mushroom cardigan. Because she's an illustrator, she did an illustration on how to cut it, how to do it. And I discover all the other podcasts and I really, really like it. Um, so I recommend this podcast. And if you speak Spanish, because I've learned Spanish uh, with my husband, And I really enjoy watching a podcast in Spanish too because it's a way for me to keep hearing Spanish. Uh, if you speak Spanish, you will uh, really, really uh, love Beatriz Molina podcast. Her podcast is called El Podcast de Miso. Um, it, I like a lot what she needs. It's, um, I like the way she presents what she needs. Uh, she presents as well things that she likes to read, sometimes some sewing. Uh, I think she's great. She's been doing it for quite a while and um, I think it's not that easy to, to keep uh, putting new content on YouTube. Uh, with so much regularity over the years. So I recommend it if you uh, can understand Spanish. And if not, it's a way to uh, learn a new language. Okay, so that's me. Um, so I don't know while I'm recording this if what my daughter uh, Uh, try to record is good enough to put in the podcast. If it's good enough, you will have a few footage from our holiday in Spain. If it's not good enough, you'll have a few pictures and then we'll do better. Um, for my um, Christmas present, a Christmas present for myself, I bought a microphone So I hope this podcast will um, be a bit more, not professional, I, but a, a bit more um, easier to listen and to watch. So the next step, I guess, would be to buy a proper camera, and, but we'll see that. Now I'm just doing it that way, and I hope you enjoy that it's just very... The way I am. <laughs> so that's it for me today. Um, and I'll see you next time. Bye.